Howdies and salutations, y'all. Hope you've had a good day off. Or, well, day on. Whatever your day may have been. Hope things are good. As you can see, we've got Ishtar meandering right along here. Because last time we left off with a breakthrough, finally. And some good ideas I'd need to research, which shall continue. However, before we get too far into that, I think we want to do a little bit of a recap of what just happened. So, and by just, I mean two days ago. You know, on stream. Nothing, nothing crazy. But basically, in addition to resolving what was going on with the bones, we did get all of the vertices mapped, which was a actually significant breakthrough. Um, and we managed to actually figure out some of the animation tool and how it works. So we've got something that admittedly cracks me up, but uh, isn't necessarily helpful. Um, actually, I wonder if there's a way to save multiple motion types to this one model. I don't know how much Blender's designed for animation as opposed to creating the assets for animation. Like, I know you can do it, so I'm sure there's something. Um, but yeah, the point was we were able to get it up and walking, which is grand. And we added we added one cut on the knees, so it's actually got like a visible joint for the knee, which has improved its I don't know if the word would be character or personality personality. Looks a lot less flat now that it can do that. So two goals today, really, well, two ish goals today. One goal, see if we can't get a few more surface subdivisions going on here so that it moves more naturally. And I can't promise that. Like, I literally just can't promise that. Because it's already put on the, um, on the armature, it seems like it's going to be harder to subdivide based on what I can tell. But we're going to try. Two. Let's see if we can't get like an actually nice walk cycle going in here first before we get something fun and wonky like this. Although these are moving well. It's just... It's just funny. Okay. And we can do this with the full render. It's just going to be a little slower. And the light's going to be awkward. We are going to have to do some actual scene setting with this at some point. Um, because right now the actual results are looking less than stellar. They're interesting. Especially the geometry of those shadows, but they're not really what we need. So yeah, point one, more subdivisions. Point two, as we mentioned, we want to get an actually decent walk cycle going in here um, before we experiment with some other ones. And that includes hopefully getting some easing in. I've discovered the existence, and I knew about it at some point, but I had forgotten, so I'm not sure that counts. Um, but there is the, oh, what's it called? The something graph. The graph view... Griffograph, graphics card, whatever it is, we'll find it again. Um, oh, right, it's because I left the notes not in my notes, but the other device. Yeah, I take notes. I'm boring. Um, <laughs> graph editor. Thank you. I may be boring, but at least I know what the graph editor is called. <laughs> um, point three, of course, being neither of those things. And it's a new one that I've just added while discussing this because I hadn't thought about it. But I would like to see if we can't save multiple motion paths. Um, so I'm going to actually look that one up right now. Under save multiple animation. Sure. Multiple animations in one blend file. Oh, jeepers, this is from nine years ago. <laughs> Last updated two years ago. It's less bad. Let's see. Dope sheet view, which we are here. The action editor pane. Is that this one? 
feel like it's not. Um, nope, that's not going to be it. Hmm. Oh, action editor. So maybe this is creating a pose asset. Um, but let's see. You can create and name separate animations within this pane and use the main dope sheet pane to scale your animations. Well, let's see. And you can save them elsewhere. It's better than, let's see. Yeah, much better than keeping all of them lined up in a single timeline. So let's see if we can't, um, we're in the action editor. Did, how did that change things from the dope sheet? Okay, so we got, ah, okay. So now we have two of them we can swap between. And if I were to say, go back to the dope sheet for this second one, and click on this so we can't get some, wow, we shouldn't be forcing my computer to render all that right now. That's a waste of its energy. We shouldn't do that. Let's actually see if we can't select the armature in here. It's the thing that's got the keyframes. Uh, okay, let's, <laughs> sorry, gate, that's my bad. Pause you. I know we've got, I know we have keyframes in here. Um, but I think we need the model itself selected if we're going to do that. So let's go to object mode. Let's get the armature. Let's set our setting. Sorry, dragon. I believe that you might be slightly in the way. I know that the bones can be visible in this view. I mean, beyond. Yeah, okay. Is it? Oh, is it doing that thing again? We, we encountered this last time where it decided it just wanted to change a setting somewhere. And, ooh, that's weird. I don't know why you'd want wireframe like that, but I guess it's an option. Viewport, it was viewport settings, not viewport shading. Why can't I edit that? Do I need to go into this view? The bones, it, it got the bones. So why are they no here? <laughs> oh. Wait, what did I just toggle? Oh, show overlays. Well, that <laughs> that makes it easier. Whoops, nope, I don't want to move that. Um, uh, no. Ah, no. I'm scrolling through the timeline. I want to select the entire armature is what I want to do. Including the things nested in it. Oh my word. Oh, and I've got Blender open too tall again. That's my bad. Let's fix that right up. Okay, so there's the that whole lot. So if I were to, on this dope sheet view, um, let's just delete our keyframes if if it'll show them to me. Sorry, I gotta scoot that out of the way for a second so you get to see it. Um, so this option was, yeah, delete keyframes. We're the ones that it selected there. Okay. So we're deleting them in this view. We shouldn't have. Mm, there's an important keyframe. Oh, wait, there's another way to fix that. Um. Delete keyframes, and then for this whole thing, where's the clear motion? No, not clear motion paths. Clear user transforms. There we go. Back, back to square one with you. Wonderful. So if I go to the action editor, and I go to armature action 01 versus armature action, they're all still here on armature action. Let's rename this to test jaunt. Because that's what it really was. Let's call armature action 01 something useful. Like, um, March. Cool. One of, our, one of our three daily puzzles already down. To be fair, probably the easiest one. But nevertheless, good to know. So we can, in fact, save a bunch of different animations and motion sets with this. Um, so that's test jaunt, and that's March. 
let's go back to frame zero. And let's once again clear the user trans whoop, clear the user transforms. Uh oh. Bro bro. Um Okay, so nope, I need just the armature. Just the armature and then go back into pose mode. Okay, fine. Cool, so I guess I did still want the keyframe on this one where it's in a neutral state. Well, that's going to be interesting to try to recreate. But it's something we can attempt. At least get it good enough for a baseline. Or, hold on, better way, test jaunt. Frame 30. Still not quite a true neutral. Uh, that's what I was afraid of, is that this would happen. But 30 is still better than what we've got now. So now if we go into March. Not that it March is keyframed. It's at least a start. So what I can do is go into each of these views and try to straighten things out best I can. Um, and noting that I cannot use the mesh as a reference um, because the mesh is going to be warping right now. Okay, so on this axis they're fine. It's really just this axis that's an issue. What do we want? That'll do. want this facing as much down as I can get it. And likewise with this one. Oh, there's close to no bend. Oh, that's not good. There's still plenty of bend like that. Okay. I mean, strictly speaking, it's a lot better. Well, there's both sides currently look like they have no bend, and yet they don't match. Well, they both look like they have minimal bend. See if we can't tweak this just a hair more. This side seems to be our bigger offender. Yeesh. Okay, so I want shin A to match shin B and not the other way around. But with this view, this very much ortho view, it's a little hard to tell. I mean, very much isometric view. Or at least, yeah. Ah, maybe this axis was our issue. Or at least one of them. And it still looks like it's poised to march off someplace. But it's a lot better than it was, and it's good enough as a starting frame. So, for all of these, I'm keyframing it like this in the march walk on frame 30. Let's see, I for insert keyframe. And then we're checking location and rotation. We ain't scale and squat. What is in the drop down here? Okay. Oh, right. We did see this yesterday. Okay. Let's see. Next thing that I learned. Well, I'll, I'll demonstrate it a little bit. We'll get in here. I like that we can even do it with the texture on it. That keeps things a little more lively and helps us identify when our texture is really broken, which is plausible at any given time. The UV mapping was fascinating and highly um, not necessarily complicated, but kind of intricate. Um, and I did a mediocre job of it at that because we're really trying to use this as a learning experience, not a perfect UV map. And, you know, I hadn't finished moving and doing other stuff with it, so who knew how it was going to stretch? <laughs> but I do think while we were fighting the UV mapping, we worked out a lot of the kinks that would have been issues later and otherwise. But we've got our wonderful little gate here matching our pose. Roughly. 
So let's think about if this is marching along steadily and consistently, how do we want it to march? How is that motion going to be? Okay, let me think also. If I just want this to be a steady basic walk, let's try one where the hips aren't moving up and down. It won't be very accurate to humans, but it will give it kind of a top stable feel, which might be good for the gait. Um, and it'll give me a chance to experiment with one other thing that I'd like to try. We've got all that keyframed at 30. And we will keep it keyframed at 30. But our phase zero, we're going to have a little bit of movement. Specifically with these two. Let's, we won't go crazy on it. We'll just do a little tweak. We'll have it sort of step forward. At the same time, there's one other thing I'd like to do. And I did a little research on this one in advance because I'd not have been able to guess it. I want to copy those motions onto the far bone and also flip them so that it's backwards at the same time. Because one trick when animating something walking, and it's what I'd like to do with this, is rather than moving a scene that it's in, or moving, moving it around and having to actually like reorient it and everything, if we put a scene, I want the scene to be the thing moving and the gate stationary. Which means we're going to have to get a little creative with how the move legs move, but long term it means we don't have to animate every step everywhere. So, I want to copy the motion from these two dudes onto these two. Um, and I guess I'm not subdividing the mesh anymore, although we, we can do that. It's not my top priority. I think it looks kind of funny the way it's a little wonky. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm okay with that for now. Um, let's see. Interesting. And please pardon my yawns. I, um, I'm actually quite excited on this one, and work has been busy but good. I just haven't slept enough because I was excited. Um, well, and for other reasons. I, uh, I may have stayed up too late because I got distracted watching a video of that uh, Sonic Twitter takeover. <laughs> Which, like, you know, I'm not, like, a diehard Sonic fan or anything. It, it seems like a fun series. I didn't grow up with it. Um, but they seem to be at the point where the series' reputation is so bizarre that they can have a little more fun with the characters and just do silly stuff like the Sonic Boom show. Um, and so these Twitter takeovers are kind of fun because they do a good job writing and sticking in the character in bizarre situations. And they can lean in on some funnier stuff they couldn't get away with in, like, a, a game that goes through a whole board of approval and everything. Um, so it, they, they've been fun. And I enjoy the animations that come out of them, because people make the dumbest stuff. <laughs> okay. But back to the matter at hand, or at giant stone foot in this case. Here's what we need to do. Okay. With, with the correct items, bone rig selected. This is also from Stack Exchange, by the way. This answer is by... Yusuf Ismail. Okay, yeah. Yus Yusuf Ismail. There we go. Uh, I have no idea if I pronounced that completely right. I know some of the etymology of it, but that doesn't mean I can say it. <laughs> so. Uh, alas. My brain is not sufficiently fluent in other languages. Or even other names. Something to work on. Something to work on. Ich kann Deutsch ganz okay verstehen. Und ganz okay sprechen, aber nicht perfekt. Aber war ich auf Deutschland ver uh, verliert? Um, lost. Um, dann uh, kann ich um, heimfinden. I could probably make it home if I was lost in Germany, but like my German is still not fluent where I'd like it to be, and my grammar is total schrecklich. Completely terrible. Um, um, once again, something I need to refresh on. Just like my Latin. I spent two years in Latin and like six in German. You'd think I'd be a little more competent at them by now. Oh well. Such is the way. So yes, with this, with the bone, with the correct bone rig selected, which it isn't, so let's go ahead and fix that for now. Both of them, thank you. 
Select all the keyframes in the timeline. Shift F12 to get in the timeline view. We're already there. Use your mouse to box select them or press Control A and then copy with Control C. So grab these. They're already selected because they're yellow. We're going to Control C it. Proceed to the other bone rig. Doop a doo. <laughs> they're already keyframed in that pose. Whoops. Um, let's see. It needs at least one initial keyframe, as is. Eh, there's already something there. Paste it and flipped for it is to have the graph editor. Oh, okay, so this is where we need the graph editor. Because if we wanted to just match it exactly, then I would paste it right now. Um, oh, wait, there's just a paste flipped option. Okay, well, we don't even need graph editor, but I could try doing that. Um, on the correct frame. And it's going to not be good. Cool. And these ones aren't even moving the way I'd expected them for this frame. So something's great. Um, did I fail the keyframe? Or was it really just that subtle of a step? Which is now backwards on this one. Or did I control X? That'd be embarrassing. Um... Okay, anyway, let's, what, did, no. Delete keyframes, not duplicate, sorry. And then clear user transform. That's annoying, that's happening. Annoying that this one's so twisted. Both of them. Is it, did I copy the rotation? Did I keyframe the rotation and not the position? <laughs> oh, I think I may have. There shouldn't have even been any rotation. Okay, so 30, 60, 90, 120. Well, no, hold on. I need to think about... Uh, so I'm, I'm going for 120 frames right now, which at 30 frames a second means we got a four-second walk. I think that's a fun loop. Thunka, 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 thunka. But I also needed to go through a full range of motion in that time, so it needs to get back to the starting zero pose, which, um... Oh, boy, which one should be the starting pose? True neutral would be weird, and also isn't really a viable option, truthfully, if this goes the way I think it will in my head. Um, let's see. Hmm. So if we were to say... I guess it would be viable. There's going to be a pass-through in the middle where it is true neutral which is probably what frame 30 should be for both of them anyway. So let's undo these rotations. Let's sacrifice the proper angles of the bones in order to make the mesh look decent. That's fine. The mesh is the technically the important part. Of course, messing with this inherently ends up messing with the mesh too, so meh, meh. Meh. <laughs> it's something that we'll need to learn on subsequent attempts is cleaning up some of these motions. This is the first run, the goal is to get it done. Future runs can refine. They say, well, they being an abstract, esoteric concept, but, you know, I have heard it said, wow, that's even less committal. I saw on Toby Fox's Twitter, <laughs> way back when, a point that I do agree with, that at some point when it comes to art type things, just finishing a project in and of itself is actually good, and in fact, it's the kind of thing that you need to build up as a habit. Because it's easy to get so caught up in the halfways and never finishing, but if you can get better at finishing, and that doesn't mean better at doing the thing, it just means better at prioritizing and calling it when it's good enough, <laughs> then that goes a long way. Because I'm sure he could have tried to refine Undertale even more and even more, um, and we'd have never seen it. And he might still be in his folks' basement. Uh, well, I mean, he might still be. I honestly don't know. He's very secretive. 
and I choose not to pry into the life of celebrities, even if they're indie celebrities. <laughs> um, let's see, this will be our neutral pose. Let's proper keyframe this. Insert. Yeah, it was location and rotation. Okay, well. There you go, that's all of them. But the point was, if you can get in the habit of just being, of, of knowing when to call it, you, it makes it less hard to be, you, sp you waste less time like fiddling about with it being like, well, is it good enough? Is it, yeah. That's what I really liked about the 30 minute time limit we started implementing on Sword Timber. I think it actually, because the sword quality, yeah, it dropped a tiny bit, but it wasn't even like 80-20 rule where I cut out 20% or like cut out 80% of the effort to get like, to lose 20% of quality. It was like, I still had like 90% of the quality on most of those. Like, yeah, one or two of them could have benefited from more time. I think the um, one inspired by, like, Mesoamerican, like, oh, I wish I remembered the exact site. The prompt was Snake, I think. The point being, that one could have benefited with a little more fine-tuning, but it still looks decent at a glance and would probably work as an icon. Just not a permanent icon. And some of the other ones, like the Leaf Blade, just straight up look better than the ones I spent three hours on. So, like, yeah, knowing when to call it and just say it is good enough and it will look sufficient for our needs. It's tough. I'm bad at it. <laughs> um, but it's important, and it's something I want to continue to practice. So, we will try to do that instead of monologuing absentmindedly. Oh. Hello, edge of my screen. Let's put you away. <laughs> And this is why I don't keep anything weird on my desktop. I also don't keep anything weird anywhere else on this device. Um, because if you haven't noticed, half the time these programs for art like open your random parts of your file structure when you try to save. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> I will not keep the obscure memes. Those are secret for me alone. And anyone else who dares find them. Okay, anyway, frame zero. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to get distracted on esoteric monologuing, and then I got worse. Um, let's really lean into this march. Like, I don't, I don't want it to go too crazy high. But, like... Oh, other thing. Camera view says that that's probably... Actually, that's okay. Because... Okay, that's actually great. Okay, let's take these. Let's... Oh, wait, no, I. Or insert keyframe. There's probably a better hotkey for, like, name for that. They, they could have done better. We're going to copy those. We're going to go to these two. We're going to... First off, let's just try pasting the keyframes. Interesting! Rotated in a different direction. But you can still tell us the same keyframes. What happens if I paste flipped? Hey. Hey. What happens if I were to undo that, rotate this about 90 degrees, uh oh, and then paste it? Um, roll V. Nope, it's just kicking itself. Well, what this tells me is I need to pay more attention to the orientation of the bones before I merge them with the mesh, which is actually a good heads up. Not the kind of thing I could have planned for if I didn't know about it. So it's not critical in this case, but in future animations with much more complex rigs, I do need to pay closer attention to that. That's mm, a little annoying, but it makes sense. So I can't really argue with it. Let's see. Pardon me. Also, I've realized that I can't exactly copy this anyway, even if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and just fix it. Well, we'll give this kind of a tiptoe look. It'll be a silly-ish walk. Whoops, no, not freeform. There we go. And this one, I want to be angled back, but I still want it to basically be on the ground. I realize the whole gate is technically in the air right now. 
which is not ideal. And I'm trying to figure out if I would need... What would I... Hip, I'd have to have hip motion to make this work. Okay. I didn't want to do hip motion on this first one. But that's gonna happen. Level the playing field. Nope, not freeform movement. There we go. It'll make it look slightly more natural anyway if I have the hips move a little for it. Right? This looks natural. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, we can select all of these and keyframe them too. Location and rotation. Oh yeah, hip B doesn't move. That'll okay, that'll be interesting. So what's our what's our loop looking like right now? Ah, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be able to get into the other bonus topic I want to talk about, because you can see it. This movement looks smooth and awkward, and if you're not familiar with animation and such, you might not be able to put your finger on why. The answer is the easing. That ain't how we move <laughs> um, when we're walking, and it's really not how this should move either. Like, even lumbering? For the record, easing is... Okay, it's never a good idea to use a metaphor where the thing that's supposed to be familiar is, like, Calculus, <laughs> so let's not do that. Um, well, I wouldn't really need calculus numbers. Basically, if they talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. Position is the spot you're in, and we can understand that pretty clearly. Velocity is, well, speed and direction, technically, but the important part here is speed. Um, so that's how fast you go from one spot to another. So that's just a flat speed. It's like you're going 30 miles per hour. It takes you um, 60 minutes to go 30 miles, <laughs> two minutes to go one mile. Um, that's the point. It's flat. Acceleration is, so, so basically you can define it as a change in position. It is just you go from position A to position B. So it's a change in position. Acceleration is basically the same thing, but for velocity. Acceleration is a change in velocity. So you're going from 30 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. You're speeding up. And that's, you know, that's, you know, common concepts. But when you're moving, and like movements and animations and stuff, it really matters. Because the defaults on a lot of these, and it's, it's a fine default, is to do a really smooth, like... Either just a flat velocity, so it just like goes across and it does its thing, or like a kind of softened, and I bet this has a, actually, I've got it, that's what these are, by the way. This is how the acceleration works. Um, you basically define it. You're like, okay, do I want it to be slow at the start and then fast in the middle and slow at the end? Um, which is how a lot of the, actually, that's how a lot of the default ones work, too, is it sort of like eases in, which means it's speeding up like zooms and then it eases back out slowing down again uh we probably don't want that for this and i mean i can adjust this i don't think we want random as our example let's see what constant does i doubt it's going to be super visible on this yeah i'm not even sure if i've got wait hold on oh i just needed to enable it so let's see how the motion looks a little different now it's just all the way across Versus if we do linear, no, it still just looks kind of all the way across. This might not be the best example in the world. Let's try sharp. Yeah, okay, this this isn't a good example of it. There, there's much better like samples and just basic beginner's animation stuff. But the point is we're going to have to tweak that later. And that's something we can do with that wonderful graph chart table thing. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll remember what it's called someday. Um, terminology is always the hardest thing to pick up. Okay, but the point is, I think we can sort of see what we want with this walk. We want it to start at the beginning. It's like mid-step. Next thing that happens is, let's see. Yeah, okay. So next thing that happens is this foot is actually going to come down first and then go back. Or at least it's going to... It won't just be a smooth all the way back to position one. It's that that not that. We want it to come down and then scooch back. And then this one may trail a little bit even. Like it's it should probably I'm gonna have to add a keyframe like 20 seconds so that this is dragging a little bit, because it's on the ground. 
and then it will start to pick up into its step, and this will slide back because it's on the ground. It'll make more sense once we do it, but there are a lot of moving pieces to this, which is good. If it didn't have that, it wouldn't be an animation. So, for these two, I'm adding another keyframe at phase 10. And that keyframe is this hip taking it to the ground. Because I do still want this to kind of be a lumbering walk. You know, maybe let's let's do it at 15. It's not strictly speaking necessary, but like I think it will be worthwhile. Because um, I want this to get keyframe pointing down. So that that's it, like the plane. And then I want that. I still want it to be forward. Let's flatten that out a little bit. And let's try not to twist it. No, not freeform. I want the green. Yeah. Maybe I want the whole thing. This is going to be very wonky. Anyway, let's. Whoops. Let's iframe those location and rotation there. Then let's look at the whole thing now. Um. It looks a little more like it's stepping down. I kind of want to move these sooner, honestly. Okay, yeah. And then once we have more follow through, but I want it to look like that foot is like coming down. Then I think we can once we tweak the easing and the that those pieces, the fall off, whatever you want to call it. Once we tweak that, that'll look better too. I also just realized I haven't saved in a while, so let's do that. <laughs> That's important. Okay, so while that one's doing that, and oh, I forgot to have the hip move down with it. That's why the motion's looking a little weird. I forgot to keyframe the hip. No. Um, I think that's fine. But now, if I go to the start and watch this whole thing, there we go. Wow, it even, like, on the middle part, it even rises up. I think that's actually correct to animation. Like, or to walking, rather. So just observing what needed to naturally happen, coincidentally, got us to what we needed to do. It's not really a coincidence, it's how people figured out the first time that that's how you need to animate it. Because that's what it does. But it's cool. It's cool to be able to sort of accidentally recreate that. Neato. First of the dead. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Dark Souls dumb meme from like 2013. Probably even older. That game's been around a while. Because it was a 2011 release, right? Dark Souls 1. Okay, anyway, we've got these two. This is going, this one's going to return to a neutral pose. Which does still mean its foot has to be on the ground. So the thing I talked about doing was let's see. okay. Basically, what I need to do is I want this to lag behind a little bit, and I want the knee to sort of kick back forward. So it's already got. Uh, we had a visitor last stream who pointed out correctly that this isn't how knees should bend, really. So I probably keyframed that in a bad way. It should. Now, this should be a little more forward. This should really be the thing that's back. Um, and I don't want it to clip through the ground if I can help it. We'll try to avoid that best as we can. Keep that toe on the ground. <laughs> if we really wanted to like deform the foot so that it would have a flat section on the ground the whole time, we could add another bone. But, you know, learning. <laughs> um, learning. So this, I do actually want to just re-keyframe onto this. So I want that to be our starting pose for this now. So if we do that, let's just see it walk. Not ideal. It definitely does some weird stuff. This is still rotated weird. I didn't keyframe it. I ought to just keyframe the whole darn thing every time. I shouldn't. That's not good practice. Man, it's tempting. <laughs> okay. 
There we go, that's better. So that'll sort of smooth in. Not smooth in, but it'll be there. Um, I like that from this angle it does just look like normal human legs. You can't tell that it's got like a crazy wide waist because it's a giant monument and not, in fact, a person. Um, but it's interesting. So, after our initial little run through, we've got pose one, pose two. I want the 60 second mark to be basically the inverse of zero. And then 90 should be returning to the base pose, and 120 is going to be returning to zero. So actually, let me select these, copy them, 120, paste. Um, same deal with 30, actually. This is our true neutral. So I want to select these, pop it at 90. Paste. So this is going to look really weird right now. Doop ba doop ba doop ba doop ba doop ba doop ba doop. <laughs> That's okay though. Um, and we'll see if we need any interim frames over here. I'm not sure we will, but there's a chance. So we'll uh, we'll leave it there as a possibility, shall we? Now we just need to do the inverse of this, but in the middle. So let me. Whoops. Let's try doing that copy flip and see if it gets any of them right. <laughs> Paste flipped. Yowza! That's really terrible. Did I just not select all of them? I'm pretty sure I had. <laughs> okay, so that ain't gonna do us any good. It's gonna do some weird twitch. Um, zoop! And then it sort of, ah, oh, it like casually kicks its leg. It's shy. It's like, oh, well. It's like, oh, don't mind me. <laughs> okay, well, the Ishaitar gate isn't really what we're looking for. So, let's, in fact, I'm thinking maybe let's just nix that entirely. We'll just uh, do away with those. Apologize, I've gotten a text from my mother. He's lovely, and I uh, don't want to ignore it. But it appears to be a broken Etsy link. That worth it. Etsy's always wonderful. I will let her know after stream that that didn't work. Also, Redbubble wants me to take a survey on the sticker I bought. I'm going to not do that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love taking surveys. A, it's good to give feedback that's useful to people. Otherwise, they take it through big data and it's garbage. So, and also annoying to us. So, like, all in all, bad. So instead of doing that, we will not do that. Okay. So what I wanted to do here, or, and by not do that, I mean actually fill out the darn survey. I'm going to paste this here. And this is going to still look really weird. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. It's like it's doing an exercise. It's like and a one. It's that it's like that horrible stair step exercise. <laughs> okay. Um so one in between frame, it's not a it's not really a I guess it is technically an in-between. It's not a key pose. Um but definitely on the raise, I want it to lift the shin up more when it's going up. So I'll need that for this section and this section, because those are up, up sections where this is other leg down section. So this is going to be basically leg B up, leg B down, um, leg A up, leg A down. And we're going to have it sort of alternating while the other leg just drags, because that's going to give it a slightly heavier, more consistent trotting look. If we wanted to run, we'd need basically have, like, this is obviously one going back and one going forward, but it'd be more emphasized. Um, this one's still mostly tracking along the ground. I think, and I don't know if this is the official definition, but my definition of a walk versus a run is if you've got both feet on the ground at the same time, it's a walk. 
If or if you no, if you've got at least one foot on the ground at all times, it's a walk. If you ever have both feet off the ground at the same time, it's a run. That's that's it. That said, if you're running in the halls at school or work and they say, you're not running, and you're like, well, I'm stomping my feet down, so there's always one on the ground, and I'm walking, they're still going to get mad. <laughs> not talking from experience, I just have a sneaking suspicion. <laughs> okay, well, we'll clean that up when we clean that up. Does the more important thing, right? well, we can, we can still do it. Basically, I want more initial up. I want by this frame to have more up. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion that if I just straight up go up, it may not like that. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> because the up has to come from this. Not freeform. We'll even let this foot trail a little. Let's try keyframing that for these two and not the hip yet. No, I probably should, but I didn't move it, so we won't mess with it. Let's see how that looks on this one. Okay, yeah, it's definitely got more of a kick with that, don't you see? Like, woo! Up, yeah. Maybe too jarring. I almost want to move these to, like, oops, sorry. This mark. Make it a little, little softer. But it's still clearly, like, straining to pick it up. I think that's better. And it is crazy to me to think that I've made something like this, and it feels like it didn't take this much time. Granted, I was in a class, so I had a professor's guidance to help solve some of the problems, which would have saved at least, like, two hours. Three hours, based on past streams. Hey, Sarah Bree, welcome back! I've been taking your advice to heart in terms of the knee movements, and I think that we're getting a little closer to what we're going for. How have you been? Yeah, we're, uh... A, we, um... Oh, what was the thing we did earlier? Oh, we learned that we can keep multiple animation tracks. So we can, we can still keep our really ridiculous jaunt, like the initial jaunt. Um, which just was that crazy, crazy poses. Um, but I've also, I'm working on a new march, so that'll be a separate one that I'm trying to make. It'll be a more consistent, like, walking animation. I'm trying to make the actual motions more natural, but I still want it to be kind of plodding. We may do a sprint at some point, but with this, with this structure, plodding feels like the place to start. Um, we may also add some more subdivisions on this surface, specifically. Um, I'm possibly that one, although I don't know it'll help this one that much. But it might be fun. So yeah, we're... It, again, it, it's going to be slow and meticulous while we work our way through it, but it's, it's getting there. Let's get everything selected. Now the trick... Basically, we've got... We've got half the loop. Oh, yeah! Oh, my brother loves No Man's Sky. I've heard it's come a long way from the early days. Skipping that song, it's very pitchy. <laughs> did you did you find any brand new planets, or is stuff starting to be a little more populated these days? I mean, I know it's still a functionally infinite world. <laughs> Galaxy. Okay. Yeah, this is the one that needs to invert. Ah, okay, fresh beginnings. Seems like the seems reasonable to me. Okay. So I basically want to mirror these. Oh yeah, that's always Always got to relearn everything, huh? Um, huh, that's interesting. That's not what I was doing before. 
Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it looks like a fun game. I just, I've never been the exploration game type as much. Um, at least not open, empty exploration. Like, I like the Dark Souls style of exploration, not because of the challenge. People get way too hyped up about that or whatever. Um, but it's a cool, full world that I just like, like, discovering the lore and also the environment behind. But, like, brand new empty planets where you build and conquer? I mean, I guess I enjoyed Minecraft a lot, but, like, for the most part, I've never had that itch. But I know, like, I, like I said, my brother loves it. So when we play Minecraft, we always go very different directions. <laughs> Um, but it's good. They're both absolutely valid ways to play. Okay, there's a few other important details that I'm not remembering on this that I'm going to need to remember. Oh, right, yes. This is going to need forward to match that one. And this one's going to need to move back to match where that one was. <laughs> now that looks like a sprint. Let's maybe not go quite that far on it, though. Bend this one more. Bend this one less. So that, whoops, no, not freeform. So that it's still on the ground. Got a foot down. Let's, hmm. I don't think that's right. But I do think that I'm going to keyframe it anyway. And we'll, because it's close enough to write that we can tweak rather than having to build from a blank slate. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Blender's a blast. But good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. In the meantime, we will keep on keeping on with this, and maybe we'll break open the graph editor later. And I actually remember the name of it, which is shocking to me, frankly. <laughs> I couldn't ten minutes ago. Oh, I, I don't have a public one. I need to set that up. Um, sorry. Still fairly, fairly-ish new to the streaming scene at this point. It's, uh, I, I need to get some of the collateral built up. Let's see. If, if you want a direct message, I think Twitch has a function for that. Um... I can add you as a Discord friend, at least. Uh, we can get started there. There's always interesting stuff going on on Discord. It's a fun place. Also potentially full of scams, but, like, you know... <laughs> mostly a fun place. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's see... Yeah, let me, perfect, yeah. And that shouldn't, yeah, Whispering Me won't show up on the stream chat either, so good, 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 that'll be great. I'll get you added. If I can find it. Good old Twitch, I'm still not 100% mastering these controls, truthfully. Make sure that I don't accidentally play someone else's stream. That would be awkward. <laughs> okay, but yeah, just sometime tonight, I'll get you added, and we can figure that out in the future. Right. So it's got a little too much twist in this. Okay, that's good to know. This one, too. Real subtle. Nothing crazy. We can refine. 
that there's better ways to do this, but it's at least a start. Uh, that one that one is too fast, probably. Oh, yeah. There we go. Forgot that was a prerequisite. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, and I may have to add you after stream just because I haven't got Discord set up in a way where I won't straight up dox myself if I open it right now. Um, but I will, I will definitely get you added in the next, um, I guess, about hour and two minutes. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Reminds me, there's another person, Datto, stops by occasionally. I need to get their Discord, too. Um, I'll have to actually start a server for, for this at some point. It'd be fun. I've got plenty of terrible memes. All just waiting to be shared, as long as people don't mind puns. If you mind puns, there might be an issue. Oh yeah, starting a Discord server is not hard. I just didn't want to do it too early, um, because... A, I don't want to have to think about moderating it, <laughs> but B, if you've got one, yeah, yeah, puns are absolutely allowed and encouraged, but but the bigger thing is, like, if you join a Discord server and it looks like no one's commented in two years, it makes people less likely to come back, so I was hesitant to start until there was already, like, A, until I was sure that this is something that I want to do for a long time, and B, until I was sure that there were enough people to actually keep some momentum with it. <laughs> But that was just my thought process, and I tend to overthink everything I do, so <laughs> I suppose that's true. But, like, then you lose the history, and I guess you could just start a new one and not toss the old one. That's a fair point. Let's see. Yes, we shall erase, erase the annals of history. Okay. I'm pretty happy with the motion pad. I, I do want to smooth some of these keyframes. Although I like that one that really lands hard. Um, which is because of these specifically kicking it up a notch. So it's up, smooth down, up. Actually, it's not a smooth down. That's the that's the down kick because it's so much more up on this one, and then down. So what that means is that this one needs a similar immediate down right here. Um, and the way up to do that is probably going to have to involve moving the hip, right? Let me compare. Let's see, that one's up. And then kicks down real quick. Yeah, the hip down, and that straightens out. Paprika, like um, like the comic, or like the character from Blue's Clues, or another thing that I don't know. Oh, no, I don't believe I have. Ah, uh, yep, well, anime, we're certainly anime friendly here. Um, my friends got me hooked on it during the pandemic. <laughs> I think since then I've watched more anime than shows that weren't anime. Ah, <laughs> um, oh, man. Oh, okay. I'll have to check it out then. I'm always a fan of bizarre architecture that gets up and meanders around. Also a fan of Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> Not, yeah, different style, but same energy. Oh, 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's fair. I won't deny it is a mixed bag. I was hesitant at first, and there's still plenty where I'm like, okay, nope, this is... A, you, you watch for two or three episodes, you're like, no. Uh, this is not for me. But there's, you know... I have, I have found enough that were interesting. I... <laughs> I feel like there's always more knowledge to be found. Um... I feel like it's a lot like saying you enjoy, like, superheroes at this point. Like, there are people who can be absolute, like, super deep knowledge experts on it. But on completely different things and have no knowledge about each other's worlds. Like, you have the people who are the masters of the old comics from the 40s um, and 30s and earlier. And you've got the folks who are, like, the modern Marvel Cinematic Universe and everything in between and all possible overlap and spin-offs. Um, and I feel like anim trying to say that someone's knowledgeable about anime is the same way. Like, maybe they're a big fan of, like, stuff from the 60s, like, real old-school experimental stuff, but they've never, they've not seen anything in the last 20 years they liked. Or they're obsessively, like, just, like, purely a fan of something like Nekopara and nothing else. Or, like, <laughs> just any, any old weird mix of things. So yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot, but I wouldn't say that I'm knowledgeable at this point either. Let's snap down. Snap down with the hip and the straightening. I want the same thing with this one. Snap down with the hip. And straightening mostly done. Whoa, nope, not freeform. Mostly done here. Then just keeping this basically level. Um, and also this axis not quite as rotated there as it should be. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Finding the right stuff can be tricky, but when you do, it's really fun. I, um, I mostly go for lighthearted, silly stuff. Like, I'm not big on... Uh, the, the, the deeper, more dramatic ones can be fun, but they're not really relaxing for me, and that's usually what I'm trying to watch for. So I watch dumb stuff like um, My Life as a Villainess and what is it, Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle? I don't know if that one's well-known or not. Um, oh, and... Uh, oh, what was it? Oh, oh, what's it actually called? The Way of the House Husband. It, it, they, they're just dumb, silly things that crack me up. They're not... They're not suggestive, they're not intense, they're, they're just lighthearted. <laughs> um. Okay, so now if we see this walk, we should get more of a down snap on both feet. It's not quite symmetrical, but it's good. It gives it a little more weight. Like, uh, down. Uh, down. Yeah, I mean, I can, watch, I can watch stuff that isn't as well. Um, I just need to mix it up a bit. Part of the reason I ended up leaning towards anime and, like, I definitely watch kids that are more aimed at, like, or not, I don't watch kids. I watch shows that are aimed at kids or, like, young teens and stuff. Like, I enjoyed Owl House and stuff like that and Phineas and Ferb. Just because, like, all the stuff aimed at my age is so dreary and, I don't know, like, I have a day job and I live in the modern world. Stuff's kind of dreary enough. <laughs> I don't want to go wallow in it. <laughs> I'm happy to face the day when it matters, but I don't want to face the day when it doesn't. Like, when it's not even a real day, when it's a synthetic day. That said, I somehow have gotten hooked on Danganronpa, although it is pushing my limits in terms of what I can put up with in a day. <laughs> um, let's see. It's... If you don't know Danganronpa, it's basically like a series of murder mysteries, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath the surface. It's an interesting, really interesting series. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I do enjoy stuff that's thought-provoking. I just never... Like, I have to have the energy for it. For, for there to be thoughts that get provoked, you know? <laughs> um, otherwise, it just sort of glosses over my brain's like, bleh. Like Fahrenheit 451, the, 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 as a book example, it's a great book. Um, lots of interesting thoughts, surprising good, surprisingly good anticipation of not just concepts, but like specific future technology. Um, it's, it's great. 
But man, if you're in the middle of high school and exhausted and it's assigned to you, you will not get the same enjoyment out of it if you're reading it in your free time because you want to. Like they're very you've got a they're very different. Absurd parts are always fun too. Yeah, I'll have to watch the parade scene of Paprika. Um let's see. Okay, I want to improve the upkick of this too. So here we've got this one basically angled directly opposite hip A. And the feet is actually lag the foot's lagging behind the okay, that's interesting. So, okay, that's good. Basically what we did then was well, we just upped the rotation of this a little bit and actually had the foot drag. Okay. That'll give it a little more of an up kick. Maybe too much of an up kick. Yeah, I need to. Like, I like the character of it. Oh, actually, it, this feels like trudging through snow, doesn't it? Okay, maybe I do like the up kick. Let's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that back. Yeah, well, when, once you say that, and then once you can sort of lean into it more, you can control the motions with a lot more detail. Yeah. <laughs> um, it also helps that it's a fresh day, and I'm not at the end of the stream doing this. <laughs> um, that, that, uh, but yeah, no, I... Having feedback and suggestions, to, more, more brains is better than one, no question. Especially when you're trying to problem solve. Okay, so we're kind of getting like a trudge. Thunk. And thunk. There's probably not enough hip motion for it to really be a trudge. I should lean into that. Yeah, I was just focused on like, okay, one knee, one leg go front, one leg go back. Okay, one knee go front, one knee go back. But that's not how knees or walking works. Um, so yeah, someone had to stop me before I did something really dumb. Uh, and as much as that's a joke, that's also probably generally like the subconscious thought process that was going through my head. So like... Let's try amping this up a little bit. Oh, right. There we go. Let's iframe that. Only a selected channel. Okay, let's see how this works. Side. I was a little more hesitant. I'm not sure that's quite what I wanted. Uh, it kind of works. But it goes up a little too fast. so funny and they're just I, I i'm sorry i just get distracted watching it i find it very funny <laughs> let's see i definitely do like having the hip up more i think that's that gives it a lot more of an oomph oh yeah absolutely it it is, and I ought to watch some like actual walk cycles and people walking and stuff to really reinforce that. Like, if I could just find like a proper side view video of someone trudging through the snow. Uh, yes, I got your whisper. Um, I I'll just need to I'll need to add that after the stream. Sorry, I realized I never confirmed that. Yeah, no, they they both came through. Okay, so hip up for this one at thirty. That means hip up for this one at ninety. Let's do it.
And for this, we need to account for the rotation because I'm trying to not have it be a way out the sidewalk. Although I do want to do one of those like really wide, <laughs> like maybe no knee joint bending. And so it just has to do like a really wide twist. I think that would be a funny one to do as well. Um, and that's the joy. Once we've got this rigged with the bones and everything, we can, we can make more and more poses without having to rebuild the mesh every time. That's what's so nice about this over 2D animation. <laughs> Uh, it's a definite perk. Um, although 2D is obviously fun in its own right, and I don't, I don't dislike it. And there we go. There we go. And there we go. It almost feels like it's tiptoeing now. Yeah, it's this is fun. It's like a little sneaky walk. <laughs> um, now there are plenty of other things that we'll have to tweak on this, of course. Um, I'm actually going to call this sneak. Um, so other things to test before we're finished with this. Obviously, I want to do more walks and poses, and I want to open the graph editor and do some other stuff, which will probably be what we do tonight. Um, in the future, though, I need to actually set the scene for this. I need to, um, uh, whatchamacallit, I, I want to set like an actual environment with good lighting and stuff so that we can do better renders, because right now, oh, I should be really careful about just straight up hitting render, actually, because it might try to render the whole animation, which 120 frames, even if it's rendering 5 seconds of frame times 120, that's going to be a mistake. That's going to be 600, 600 seconds to render all of that, which, uh, it's 10 minutes. <laughs> that would be a little awkward to just sit here for 10 minutes, assuming it was getting that kind of performance the whole way through for a bad render with no planned lighting. So let's, let's, let me actually not hit render. <laughs> it wouldn't be the worst either. Like, I, I remember in school some of the projects we did, at, uh, admittedly older computer, although still pretty good. Um, but it'd be like, okay, this is going to take two hours to render. Come back later. <laughs> And just be like, okie dokie then, I hope it's not bad when it finishes. And it always would be, like, there'd be some weird thing that went wrong with the lighting or a clipping error or something, and be like, okay, looks like we're re-rendering these 30 frames of it. Uh, still good times, good times. That was one of my the classes I enjoyed the most in college. No, not really. Um, when was that? Probably only, like, six or so years ago, but... You have to consider that the laptop I was, it was a laptop I was working on, um, which did not have quite the graphics processing power of a computer that I have now. <laughs> um, and we were going for much more complex, like, that at least one of those animations, I had like a physics calculation, like stuff going on it. Um, so it had to calculate collisions and junk while it was, it was way more complicated than a lovely little walking arch. Although not necessarily better, just more complicated because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Ah, such is the way. It was still fun, and I learned a lot. Um, that must have been, like, what, 2017-ish? But, you know. Yeah, I should. I need to go... I made this computer earlier than the year. I definitely have the specs somewhere. Um, to be honest, most of the stuff we've done on here until this month, the specs didn't matter a whole lot. It, uh... It did not take much, uh, <laughs> much effort. To, it, it doesn't take good specs to run Clip Studio Paint, you know? Twitch panels? Uh, where are you seeing Twitch panels? Like, I mean, I can put my, uh, I could put my specs in, like, the Twitch panels that are underneath the stream, yeah. Not right away, but it's something to add. Um, especially now that I'm doing Blender, it really is something to add. Okay, yeah, yeah, there there should be some there, but I don't think the computer specs are in it. I guess it, I guess it would have mattered back when I was playing Elden Ring a little bit. Oh, yeah, they're hidden away in a really weird setting spot. Oh, where the heck was it? Because I had to, like, go to my channel not in edit mode, and then there was, like, an option... 
Yeah, it is, that is the panels. Those are panels. Well, there's specifically panels and then there's text below it. I know a lot of people, like, they bake their text into their panels because you can control the sizing a little better, and I want to do that in the future, but it makes it harder to update. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's hit or miss on those. They're handy, don't get me wrong. It's absolutely worth filling out the panels, but it's hard to make them look good. I always want them to be all symmetrical and balanced, and then it's like, yes, but on some screens we're going to be four wide, and on some we're going to be two or three or one. Good luck! <laughs> it's like, well, there's no balancing that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think on most computers it's going to be three wide, but for people with wide screens it can go up to four, and if you're on, like, mobile and junk, it can drop down to one. Um... So it makes it, like, three is probably the one to balance around if you're going to do it. But yeah, it yeah, like, even mine, they're not balanced right. Part of that is because I just, I, I'm sure I wrote a bunch of junk in the rules to anticipate just in case we got trolls in here. Um, I need to refine that because that was all written before I even started. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of cleanup to do on down there. But yeah, no, it looks, yeah, is what it is. Could improve, could deprove. That's not a word. <laughs> degrade perhaps fall prey to worse options anyway let's make another one of these sneak a one with everything I call this one waddle oh boy do I have dumb plans for it <laughs> okay once again I think I'm actually going to clear out these and most of, let's see, this one's another neutral set, so we'll leave that. These ones are going, and these ones are going. Why is that one leg so different in this neutral? Oh, I didn't keyframe the hit back down. Ah. <laughs> oh, hello! Welcome, Kotofe. I hope I'm saying that right. Let me know if I'm not. Welcome to the stream! We're just animating the Ishtar Gate, taking a little bit of a wander. Here, before I get too caught up in this one, let me show you the one we just, the moves we just sort of finished. They're not, you know, none of it's perfect, but I'm pretty happy with this sort of sneaky walk we ended up getting. It's it's like sneaking, but it's still really heavy. Like, I don't, I don't think an ancient monument is actually going to be all that sneaky. This thing was supposed to be like... 60 or even maybe 90 feet. It was really big originally. Even the recreations don't do it justice. I think the recreation was 60 feet and the original was 90. Anywho, uh, yeah, welcome to the stream. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, go. Go, surf the seas of the interwebs. <laughs> see, see what you might find out there. There's many a fun option. But yeah, welcome aboard, Katofe. I don't, is it Kotofe or Kotofe or Kotofi? I'll admit, um, never the best at uh, guessing names on the first go. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. We we had a few streams last week that were just debugging the bones and meshes, and so now it's fun to actually be able to get in here and just make things happen. It's been a really satisfying one. <laughs> but I, I just moved on to Waddle, which is objectively going to be dumb. But I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hip hip and thigh B need to roughly... Can I just copy and paste these two on top of it? Don't need that top one select. Oh, it's the summary. Okay, that's fine. Hi. Okay, so the copy and paste super is not playing nice with me today. That's okay. We are still learning that. So yeah, again, this is, so for context, this is sort of me relearning 3D modeling. I learned it back in college um, in a program called Maya, which is made by the folks who do Photoshop. It's, they're called Adobe, and it's, it's a good, powerful program, but it's also ridiculously expensive. And best as I can tell, not better than Blender, at least not for most of the things we need to do. Um, and so I figured, you know what? It's been long enough. I miss 3D modeling. It's a really fun, and now that 3D printers have come a long way since then, like, I might actually be able to print out some of the stuff we make. So, like, that is absolutely my jam. And so I've been having fun with that. 
let's re-keyframe those, and now we should be... Why? Why are they all the way out here? No. Get back where you belong, please. Keyframes. Okay. It's not moving, which is technically what we wanted. <laughs> But uh, yeah, okay. Let's let's see if we can't do this just with a hip waddle. So I kind of doubt that this is going to end up being our passing frame, but it might be because I'm trying to do all the movement with the hips on this one. Just make it really silly. Then um, I actually want to rotate both of these like that. And I'm going to keyframe the heck out of all of that location and rotation, just hitting I for insert keyframe, which is maybe the most obtuse hotkey I've heard in a while. It's not K. You'd think it'd be K for keyframe. <laughs> uh, but no. But yeah, what brings you by? You just checking out 3D modeling stuff? Are you interested in trying to 3D model yourself? Um, Okay, I will, I will give context. As I say to everyone, you're not obligated to answer. I'm not your, like, English teacher. You're not, like, getting graded on participation. But if you want to chat, by all means, I am a chatty individual. <laughs> I think, in, like, this many months of streaming at this point, I've definitely been proven to be a chatty individual. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, this is a start, but it's not exactly what we need, because this is just moving flat backwards, which isn't really what I want. Well, I was worried about having this be our frame. Yeah, because it sort of twists back. Hmm, how do we want to handle that? This, and that one. Well, let's go ahead and get our main poses in first, and then we can tweak and adjust around them, because it's... It's basically the equivalent of the hardest thing to draw on is a blank white sheet of paper because you've got infinite options and thus no inspiration or ideas or like obvious ways forward. However, with this one, it's just like a blank pose. It's like, okay, obviously we have a little more to work with, but it, if we know the exact pose, like the key poses that we're trying to hit, which is the whole point of key frames in the first place, then um, we can tweak what's in between and tweak the motions and everything. So for this one, I want to do basically the same thing. I want to hike this up, and then I want to rotate the whole thing. Well, oh, not, not free rotate, but specifically on this axis. Let's do that. Or actually, no, it'd be like this. And then I'm... Whoops! <laughs> I forgot that was still in the scene. Some junk I left in the background. Oh, well. Um, no, all of them. All of them. Yep. Let's copy these frames back to zero. So now this will loop nicely. But it's not exactly doing what I want to. <laughs> okay, it won't loop nicely because I definitely moved one of the legs wrong. <laughs> okay. Why does that one go up again? Doop, 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 doop. Okay. So we've got. Leg B up. Leg A up. This should be leg B up again. Okay. And then it loops back to... Yeah, okay, okay. I copied the wrong frames. That's fine. We will just copy the correct frames. Right to the end. Ooh, a little jump. I like that idea. Why did I put these here? I clearly said to put these... Okay. Put them here. Oh, okay. One, one second. Let me fix this first so that at least the basic motion is fine, and then let's let's test that jump idea because I like that as an idea. Oh, oh, I'm copying the wrong ones. That's the. Duh. Okay. Did it not get that one? Yeah, I agree. A little a little jump will give it a little more a little more of a dynamic. And I, I made I want the back to not be twisting, so I'm gonna have to give a little something to that leg. Ugh. Why am I? What have I done wrong with? The, okay, 
I'm clearing out these keyframes entirely. They're just straight up not the right ones. So, B up, A up, B up this time. So it should be the same as this. I should just be able to copy those and put ourselves, put myself right here and paste them. And we'll just do, 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 do. Okay, now, yeah, let's let's give this a little bit of a jump. We could do, we could even do that, like have it click its heels. <laughs> uh, we'll give it like a little bit of a jump. Okay, so from here, we want to have the knees like bent a little in this pose, and then make it jump, and then leg click, and jump. Yeah, okay, okay. So this pose, we need a knee bend, and we're going to need to do the same thing on 90. That's easy enough to do. Because what I need to do is actually, for both of these, we're going to bend them back a little bit. Because unfortunately, I can't just like squat the whole thing down. Its center, po center point is the top, so I need to account for that. We're going to bend this one back more than I think I need to. And because we want to exaggerate the pose, let's really go more than we need to because we're then going to have to rotate these ones and cut about half of that out. And then for these two, let's just... Uh, should actually be able to transform for the... Yeah, let's put this at ground level and not through the ground, hopefully. It can go through the ground a little bit. This thing's a giant stone... <laughs> Giant stone gate from ancient Babylon. I um, suspect it might sink into the ground a little bit on landing. <laughs> okay, then let's keyframe all of these for 30. And then let's copy these keyframes from 30 onto 90. There we go. So this will not be smooth right now. It's just going to kind of crouch. Which, admittedly, is kind of funny in its own right, <laughs> but it's not what we need. Um, because we want this to jump. So that means that when it's at its apex, this leg needs, needs to come off the ground too. So I'm going to take this pose and I'm going to move it up a little bit for now, and then we'll smooth out some of the actual jumping. But for now, like I've been saying, let's just... Uh, saying to myself anyway, let's get the broad poses in first. And then we'll get the more specific ones in. Okay, so how high up did we end up going on this? I want to make sure. Let's let's look at this from an exact Y angle. Okay, so we're about uh, squinting at it one and a half grid spaces up from the bottom leg. So let's do the same. And I frame the heck out of this. Location and rotation. Um, all right, and then I want to just copy that over onto zero. And being able to copy and paste keyframes is wonderful. Can I just say? Thank heavens. Okay, now let's look at this back from a normal orthographic view. And it's going to feel weird. But yeah, it's definitely got a little more pop to it. It's like do ba do. <laughs> definitely not waddle anymore. It's definitely more of a like skipping. It it's not quite skipping, but I'm gonna call it skipping for now because that's the closest thing I can think of. It it feels like this would be like a parade master, like leading the way, like marching in the rhythm and doing a little bit over exaggerated. But this is actually, thank you for this, a perfect opportunity to finally crack open that graph editor, which um, I'm going to have to find, because <laughs> I don't remember the button for it. Let me look that up real quick. Blender graph editor. <laughs> Man, I, I'm glad that squats aren't like this. That would be so much harder. Okay, introduction to the graph editor. Question one, how do I open the graph editor? <laughs> okay. 
Where is, the, thank you Google, where, oh darn it, don't answer me with a YouTube video, text, this should be like a three word answer. Ay ay ay, how to open, ah well. Sure, I just wasn't being very clear. Hmm. This is just the Blender documentation for sure version 2.79. We're past version 3 now. <laughs> so that's probably still helpful, actually. A lot of the version 3 kept its relevant stuff like that. Um, oh, hover over the dope sheet. Click the right. No? Or over this. Okay. Sorry, give me just a moment. Um... We're all learning together. What I'm learning is how to open the graph editor. <laughs> Shift plus F6? Is that really it? Yep! <laughs> I would not have figured that out intuitively ever. But that's okay. It doesn't have what we need in it, though. So um, I'd like to go back to the typical animation view, which, of course, I can't. I'm sure there's a way, I just, oh, oh, right, it's just one of these. So we can go to the, not the dope sheet, because that's what's down here. We can go to the, come on, animation view, where are you hiding? Or what are you called, specifically? Or, hold on, is that just 3D viewport? <laughs> I think it's just 3D viewport. Yep, yep, I was overthinking it. <laughs> Man, jumping was a good suggestion. Thank you. That's given it a lot of life. Uh, let's see. Well, let's actually select all of these and then try that again, but over here, because I don't need it over here. Okay, so select over here. Shift function F6. Was it F6? Yes! Okay! Okay, this looks horrible, but I know what it is. So... <laughs> now we're getting into it. This is the kind of nonsense that makes Blender fun. Uh, well, and all of the art and modeling and all the other stuff. The thing that keeps Blender fun is that it's, it's it changes so much. So I can select. Yeah, let's select a specific specific one. This basically shows us, for lack of a better word, the speed of the motion. So as this little, uh, I've got a dragon sitting on my laptop. There we go. So as this goes. This shows us the speed that this bone is moving at. I believe. Let me... Okay, okay. So specifically, each of these different lines is XYZ locations and rotations, which are the only things we're keyframing. Ooh, okay. So, the point being, the only thing changing with this one is its X location between these two positions. Because we're only looking at this little thigh section here, and most of its movement movement is relative to other pieces, so those aren't getting tracked on the graph header, which is interesting. But what we are doing is actually, I think this is the X rotation that shifts, not the position. Because that's this line. Um, yes, okay. So if we wanted to make this snappier, um, we could adjust the speed at which it rotates, basically. So, because right now, when we just let this play, it's not very snappy. Although, I don't think the back leg is really where we need the snap. Because uh, we got the crouch, and then I want to quick out from the crouch. Okay. So let me go ahead and reselect everything, and we're going to get a lot of lines going here, but that's okay. Because what I want to do is really make the crouch itself snappy. And all that requires is for me to know which frame we need to be doing that on, which is going to be 30 and 90, as I recall. So here's frame 30. And we, we don't want to tweak the positions of anything, but using this bar we can tweak the speed at which things change. And I wonder if I can just select all of them and do this. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know, perhaps I should have thought this through. Ooh, 
that really just warps into itself, doesn't it? Turns into an M.C. Escher painting. Okay, so... I forgot an important detail. <laughs> Actually, several important details. So let's just undo all of that, including this one. I don't want to increase the speed of everything, I just want to increase the speed of a few rotations and a specific location change. Because what happens... Let's pause for a second. Let's look at frame 30. It's funny to watch it just shoot through at the top. Like, zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily entertained if it isn't obvious. Um, so yeah, so we are here, and what's really changing should be obvious because those lines are curved. But I want to make sure I understand it, too. Whew. Pardon my yawn. It's getting a little bit late where I am, but we're going to keep on plugging through. Okay. So starting here, the back leg's positions don't change, really. But the rotation of the hip does on two axes. It goes up and it goes back for hip B. Uh, thigh B and shin B, it's just rotational changes, if even. So let's start with those. Hip B, let's look at what on here is changing. Right, I'm only going to select hip B so we can focus on this a little better. <laughs> There's location, location, location. Okay, so hip B's location is changing. Oh, right, because it has to actually go up out of the crouch. Okay, so that's one. Selecting that. Hit B rotation. Or no. Position. I select this point and let's steepen that one a fit. Wow, the wings on this are way out there. Honestly, even just doing that will sort of force it to kick up a little more. Let's try doing that with every other piece that moves, which yeah, this one, not a ton of movement, but there's enough to look at it. And just try to kick it up a little more, too. Okay, so the rotation and that. That's hit B. Thigh B, nothing changes. That's kind of what I figured, but the shin is going to have a little variance. Yep, on um, the rotation again, I suspect. Yep. I'll just sharpen that a little bit. Like so. Now let's look at the other side. Hip A has a huge motion change because it's the one that's kicking up. So I want to just make that snappier, basically. It's going to have a position change too, ain't it? Okay, so yeah, position and rotation. Oh, it's such a soft curve. Where are your... Oh, I have to actually select the point. Where are my Bezier handles? Bezier. I apologize, I don't know how to read a French name very well either. I am... really need to practice names more. I... This is a known problem. Oh. Don't know what that does. I probably shouldn't click it blindly. Holy cow, it's way out here because it's such a soft curve. Okay. Not a lot to steep in there, but we'll try. Um, like that. Hit B. Okay. Very, very faint curve, which means this handle's going to be way out here. Let's just bring it in a notch. Close enough. Shin A. What nasty curve. Just sharpen that. And I don't know how visible this is going to be. We're doing some graph editor testing. But hopefully it won't, you know, implode on itself this time. Let's see. So there's our soft one. And then there's our snappy kick. Oh boy, that's a subtle change. It's a little snappier. It's a little snappier. But keyframing would be more effective at this. Or just adjusting the general ease method.
I think we should really try just adjusting the ease types more. So if I select everything, all of it, we get this lovely diagram. And if I were to tell it to do constant instead, is that going to be discernibly different or am I applying it the wrong way? We shall see, we shall see. Who knows? Truthfully, I don't, but we'll find out. Nearest frame. I we could do sphere. <sighs> I wonder if faster movement would probably give it more of a dynamic anyway. This doesn't seem to be. Do I need to like select all of these specifically and then say, okay, make it smooth or make it root? Because I would think that would affect these. Hmm. The speed of the change. Ooh, it might have been wise for me to do a little bit more research on the graph editor before I got too far in here. And I do wonder if this updates dynamically. I'm assuming it does. Hmm. Oh. I've made that exaggerated, but it's such a small change in the beginning that it doesn't matter all that much. Let's do the rotation of hip A. That's going to be way more important. I thought. All right, let's really send this off the charts. Okay, like that's visibly different, so that confirms it updates real time. I think our little chaos ball did that too, to be fair. Whoa! <laughs> oh, it's because I'm it's only head and whoa. Okay. But the point okay, so the point is that if I want tangible effects, I'm gonna have to use a slightly less light touch on this. That's interesting. But I don't I also don't want it to have that much kick to it. And really I only want the kick like on the after, not the before. Um What I really need to learn is Bezier handles. Holy cow, how far does that one go? Ah Let's try that. Oh, that's the wrong way. That's a little too much of a kick. Actually, maybe what I need to do is not mess with the handles themselves, but just some of the pure points. I just bring this whole thing down. Because this is the rotation, so over-exaggerating it it's actually not helpful. I want the vertical change. Which is, where's the vertical change on this? Was that this one up here? No. Uh, oh, it was this one. Okay, and that one's already pretty sizable. That makes sense, actually. If I make this big and then Oh, jeepers, it looks like it's collapsing. Oh, no! Dunk. <laughs> oh, I think I see what I've been doing wrong. Well, one of the many things. The wrong vertical position. So it should be the vertical rotation of this, is what I would have thought. But that doesn't seem to have much of a tick in any axis. 
I mean, I guess I could try exaggerating. Whoop, nope, not that one. There we go, <laughs> stump. Or at least that finally answers which axis I was trying to work on. I don't want to adjust both sides of this is the problem. This is going to cause all sorts of weirdness. Stonk. Stonk. This is... Like, that is a more satisfying motion. It's just too extreme. But I can still adjust the speed. Which is all I really came here to do. But not on this point. Let's see. Up and normal. All that I want to do is have this be a slightly slower acceleration. So jump and kick. Okay, so this is a tool that we're going to be able to use for that, but it's right now a little clunkier than keyframes until I learn to use it better, which is interesting. But I am enjoying watching this little dude just prance like this, like, woo! Wee! <laughs> okay, I'm going to, let's add another one here, which will be based on this one. I'm going to call this one Chunking, and you'll probably see why in a minute. Um... Let's see, none of these are really the keyframes that chunking is going to need. Well, not quite as much as it needs anyway. We will see, we will see. Hmm. Because I need to move this back up to the height. I need to unbend the legs now for this next pose. We'll do a little bit of rotation. Rotation, there we go. And same with the shins. Bring that, straighten that out a little bit. And that's gonna, hope, oh, and also on this axis. I guess I should have picked a more keyframe to start on so it wouldn't have quite so much weird variance. Okay. Weird twisting, but nothing bad. And this is going to be... Well, hold on. That ain't exactly level, is it? <laughs> that won't do. No, I have to... Rotate both of them so that they're actually, nope, not freeform, on this axis. I'm not going to go too specific on this, but I do want to at least have like a decent baseline. So, we shall save. And uh, feel free to, if you want, obviously you don't have to, but feel free to backseat and throw stuff my way. Like, this is a backseating friendly art stream. <laughs> I suppose there's probably a decent number of those out and about the, at this point, but, uh, yeah, not infinite. Okay, so this shall be our keyframe. No, I've messed it up entirely. I have failed. Okay. Hold on. Let's un... Let's... This is why I knew I shouldn't have put too much effort into that. We'll look from a direct top view, straighten this out. There's 100% a better way to do this. But I don't know it, so we're just gonna have to make do in the meantime. At least this way I know that half of them are in the default 
position already. Okay, I hit. It's good enough. Select all of it, and I actually hit I, and we're going to, we're in chunking, good. We are going to location and rotation. Keyframe that, delete everything else. Doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop tap dancing. But no, not this time. And I want my first keyframes to be the same as my last, because we're trying to make a looping animation here after all. That way I can go for a nice little jog and not get stuck after one step. Now, this one is both extremely easy to do and extremely dumb looking. <laughs> Okay, hold on. First off, I want to make sure I'm at the 30 second mark for this. Let's rotate this like 30-ish degrees. And then let's move the whole mess up. And move it all the way over. And iframe that. It's going to basically roll up onto one toe. It might clip through the ground slightly, but that's okay. I think it's the bigger issue is that it seems to be hovering in our starting frame, actually. I uh, probably should have fixed that. Okay. And so I like that. So up on that side. I'm going to go ahead and copy this middle pose into the middle as well. So up and then down. We're basically going to do the exact opposite of what we had over here. Which I would copy and do invert, but I think we've mixed up the bone orientation a little bit, so that's no longer quite the option it would have been. But we'll know to look for that in the future. Let's see. Huh, I forgot to fix the middle ones. I don't know why I thought that would work. That. Okay, so doop and then no change. Maybe a little settling, but that's okay. Now I want this on frame 90. To do a similar 60 ish degrees. Similar, put this point where it belongs. And I frame the whole lot of it. Okay, so right now, I'm going to sort of rock back and forth a little awkwardly. You can tell that one side ain't quite keeping up with the other. Because of the start and end speeds, it does mess with it a little bit. However, that ain't the end of the world. Because there's one more axis I need to keyframe. When it's here, I want to make sure from the top view that the entire object is also rotating forward. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it'll be more fun if it is. So now, this thing is going to... <laughs> Oh, this is such a wonderfully silly pose. Okay, so from top view, we did we did what? Like, I was aiming for aiming for. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Location and rotation. Now let's let this play.
Ah, okay, I see. Not quite doing what I want, because it looks like it's just sort of rolling around, because I forgot to account for the fact that it needs to appear to be moving forward at certain points, and backwards any time its foot is on the ground. So... So this will be the back position. This needs to be forwards, basically, while the other foot... Okay, okay. I need to move the whole thing like this. Then I frame that again. And then it's going to land back there. This I need to do similar-ish deal. And by the time it lands, it's back. Okay, let's try that. I don't think it's going to be quite right, but it's going to be closer. Thunk, thunk, uh, thunk. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay. When it lands, one foot needs to be forward. The one that was in the air needs to be forward. Got it. Roughly 45. Keep that like that. And this one, same dealio. Roughly 45. Really? Okay, not quite 45. And then... Oh no, just iframe all of it. Okay. Frame it there. Copy these. Paste them over the zeros. Now, let's see what this looks like. It's going to be too exaggerated to look good. Yeah, because of the speed. If I could just get this to go on a constant speed instead of this weird acceleration, it would be grand. I mean, it still wouldn't be good. <laughs> but it's funny. And that's all I really wanted for a quick little one to do in the last 15-ish minutes of our stream. Can we just make this constant? Like, that doesn't seem to actually be affecting it. I really wish it was. Okay, graph editor. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, that ain't, that's not actually affecting it. I need to figure out how to affect the proportional editing falloff. But, unfortunately, that's going to be a challenge for next week's stream on Monday, same time. We're looking at 8 to 10 Central. That is going to be... Well, if you're in the, I can give the times in the States, at least. If you're on Pacific time, that is going to be 6 to 8. If you're on Eastern, that is going to be 9 to 11 o'clock. If you are in Central European time right now, I believe that's going to be a plus seven. So that puts us at, instead of eight in the afternoon, eight, nine, it's going to be three in the morning for you, three to five a.m. if you're over there. Um, depending on the time zone in the UK, that might end up being two to four a.m. instead. But one way or the other, don't worry, we will be back at it again Monday and Tuesday of next week. Probably not Thursday, because over here in the States anyway, it is Thanksgiving, our holiday, where we celebrate not dying, and also a lot of other things that are probably atrocities, because we have a lot to deal with in our history. But that's an issue that needs to be addressed, so I won't gloss over it, but it's not one I can solve here. So today it's a celebration of spending time with family, and that's the main point of it. So... Yeah, probably off Thursday of next week, but don't worry, we're going to keep this going. What that means is we've got, oh jeepers, four more streams until Blender November is over. Man, this month is flying by. Well, hopefully, I think we've got some good motions for this one. I'll, well, well, let's do a recap of the silly motions we've gotten today, at least. We've got, first off, we did our test one, where we were just figuring out how to make it move. Um, it kind of looks more like it's doing crunches at me than anything else. Like, if I... Okay, I'm sure I can rotate the viewport, like, uh, 90 degrees to the left, but I kind of don't want to. It's going to give me a headache. Um, but it looks more like someone's, like, buff arms just be like, yeah, 
ye, because your knees don't bend that way. Um, as Sarah Bree rightly pointed out. Next one we did was this lovely sneak, which is the other way. Um, and it's sort of like, dunk. It's like tiptoeing forward, but it's still a really heavy building. So it's, but falls are still heavy. I think, I think it's a motion that's got a lot of character. I think it's fun. And I learned a heck of a lot while doing it. So that's what matters to me. Then we've got this kind of skipping one that you helped me with, Katofi. And I've got to say, that, that one, I, I like this one. I really want to be able to use the graph editor to adjust the acceleration on it, because this one would work way better if we could really pop the acceleration and the kicks. Get a little more motion there rather than just the soft ease. That way it really looks like a jump that pushes up and then slows down as it reaches the top and gravity starts pulling and then it speeds back up as it's going down. So that's, I'm going to actually add that in my notes for next stream. Okay. So next stream, we've got two things. Stream. One, I may muddle around with poses some more, but two, I want to get some more scene and lighting going. Scene and lighting. They're the last priorities. They're the end of the, frankly, they're going to be like probably the 28th, 29th of this month. Um, graph editor and what was it called? We had it pulled down. I can hover over it again. It, the proportional editing fall off, also known as ease, amongst other things. Fall off. But it's not actually called ease. Ease is one thing that it can affect. Um, but it's the thing that I'm going to remember if I write it down in my notes. Um, so yeah, we want to get both of those going. I'm going to say especially for skipping. And I'm going to consider setting up a Discord, because that's something we ought to do. Okay, well, I'm sorry that it looks like we're going to have to wrap up before Cerebri gets back. But it has been an absolute blast chatting with you all tonight. I hope you have a good one, whether it's a night, a morning, a mid-afternoon, 3 a.m., whatever time of the year it happens to be for you. I know the time of the year is a, it's only going to vary by 24-ish hours. But, oh, thanks for following. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep this up. We do all sorts of digital art here. Oh, yeah, so I, I definitely want to do more Blender and more 3D modeling, but we also sometimes do 2D art and occasionally games and such, you know. So, yeah, stick around. It'll be a blast. Well, I hope it'll be a blast anyway. I guess if it's extraordinarily boring, you can unfollow if you so desire. But I, I appreciate you sticking around. Hopefully it'll be fun. So with that, I will bid thee adieu and all of that jazz. But hopefully we will see y'all again in the future. Whether we do or not, I hope y'all have a good one. <laughs>